Hey, Nathan here from PH Studios, and welcome back to another tower defense video. Last video and last two videos, we discussed the managers, the audio manager, and the video manager, and we got those coded and all ready to go. So now what we are going to do is we are going to explore the user interface section of the game. And this is going to take a pretty big chunk of the tutorial series, especially the command info bar. That's going to be a very large class. I think that and the map class are the two biggest classes in the entire game engine itself. But we will slowly get through the user interface sections, and then we'll do the last section, uh, which will be the command info bar. So, the first thing up for this video is the button class. Go ahead and open that. And at the very top, let's go ahead and add using Microsoft.xna.framework. And we want to go ahead and add one more using Microsoft.xna.framework.graphics. Alright, so this is a button. When you play the game, you will get certain buttons to where you can buy a tower, sell a tower, launch the next wave, pause, increase speed, decrease speed. All those type of buttons, they will be handled by this button class here. Now, a button can have two states. It's either active or inactive. Let's say you want to buy a tower. You click buy a tower, and you bought the tower. Now, if you bought the tower, and now you have only 10 money left, you cannot buy another tower. In that case, the buy a tower button becomes in an inactive state. Because you can't click it, you do not have enough money, so we need to have states. So anytime we have certain states or certain things like that, we usually should use an enumerated type for that. So public enumerated type, E-N-U-M, and then let's call it UI button state. And then we set the two states are active. And inactive. Alright, so that enumerated section goes above the class. Now, this button is going to be a clickable gameplay object. We can click the button, so the button is going to be a derivative of clickable gameplay object. Now, a button can have text, so public text button text you want it to say purchase a tower that is the button's text and also a button can have color we want to set the text to have a color that is referred to as for color the color of the font get and private set Now, also, when you click a button, when you say purchase a tower, it's going to store the tower you want to purchase in the button. Now, the button will allow us to store objects, and then when we finalize the purchase, you click buy a tower. It doesn't actually purchase the tower until you go into the map and place it. When you place the tower in the map, that finalizes the purchase we get that button stored object, which is that tower that you wanted to buy. It clones it and puts it in the map. So we need a way to store an object. And we do not know what the object is. It can be a tower. It can be any single object we can possibly think of. So in that case, we take the generic object as what we want to store. And then that will be get and private set.
And of course, what we just did up top, we need a way to know what our current state is. We built the enumerated type, but now we need to know what our current state is. So public UI button state and then state get and private set. All right, so that's it for the properties. Now we're going on to the methods and constructors. This button class will have three constructors. It'll accept text, color, and the object. It'll accept uh, texture 2Ds if we want to have a texture on it. And then it will combine the two that I just mentioned. So let's go ahead with the first one. The very basic button will have text and color and a stored object. You have text, T, color, C, and object, O. Then we set button text is equal to T, for color is equal to C, and then stored object is equal to O. Now we do the other one, which is the texture 2D. And of course, whenever we have a texture, we need to have a position. So public button, texture 2D, texture, T-E-X, I like to refer to it as a short variable name, vector 2 for position, and the object O we want to use. Texture is equal to TEX. Now how did I get that texture? Clickable gameplay object, let me go ahead and click that, is a derivative of gameplay object. Now gameplay object has graphics data and that graphics data has a texture. So that is how I get access to a texture property. It goes all the way up the line to the gameplay object, and then I gain access to that texture property. Same with position. And then stored object is O. All right, now we combine the two constructors above. Public button. We have a texture 2D, vector 2 for position, text T, color C, and object O. So we just combine the two constructors up top, and then we just, you can copy and paste all the code you see there. Then you want to delete the second stored object. All right, so that is it for the constructors. Now for the actual methods. Since the stored object is a private set, we need a way to set the stored object. And in order to do that, we will use a method called set stored object and we pass it the object obj stored object is equal to obj and now if you want to perform logic to test obj under certain conditions you can do that before you store the object But for right now, the game engine only, it does not do any conditions on the object we pass it. Uh, same with color, public void set color, color C, for color is equal to C. When a button is deactivated, we need a way to activate the button. When the button is activated, we need a way to deactivate the button. And those will be handled on methods. 
and they will be just activate and deactivate and there will be void public void activate and we just set the state is equal to UI button state dot active and that's it for that method public void deactivate and that will just set the state is equal to UI button state dot inactive. All right, one final thing. Whenever we have any texture 2Ds or text, we need to draw. So we do base, oop, public override draw. Got ahead of myself there. And then we call base dot draw, and then we draw text below which we'll get to in a future tutorial when we discuss text. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Next tutorial, we will go over the image class, and then we'll discuss the text class. I hope to see you next time.